precision holes, and the magic of modifiers. What's up? I'm Jonathan, and welcome to Maker Tales, where I'm sharing my Maker journey to help you go further in yours. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon to never miss an opportunity to keep making. Having tackled the very basics of three-dimensional precision modeling in Blender, you can see that there's quite a bit to cover. And believe it or not, we haven't even scratched the surface. Now we've taken a little bit of a, more of a bigger bite in this video. And all I can say is take your time, understand each concept, and remember that there is the small obstacle course down in the description once you've gone through the video to test your skills out along with a solution video where I will show you how to go about solving the obstacle course itself. So without any further ado, let's get some precision holes going and show you why people love Blender so much with Boolean modifiers. Now that we're really starting to dive into the 3D aspect of Blender, let's remember that this is all about precision. So let's sort out this mess that I created here and along the ways show you how to fix some holes within 3D objects and then let's get back into adding precision. So going into edit mode, I'm going to show you a couple more shortcuts now. So going into edit mode, I want to select all the faces because I'm on face select mode. So remember to select objects that are on the other side of objects, we need to go into x-ray. To do this, I'm going to be using the shortcut shift Z, which will take me into x-ray mode. So that way I can select a whole bunch of faces. I'm holding down shift to select all the faces that I don't want here. And then I'm going to hit X, delete faces, go shift Z again to get out of X-ray mode. And now you can see that we have this hole. Now, using what you learned at the beginning of this course where we were doing 2D faces, how would you go about filling this 3D face? Remember, that all 3D objects, all they are is 3D faces, but on different planes. I'm sure you've guessed it by now, but all we have to do is go edge select. You can either select all the edge loop itself all around by doing alt click, or you could just click one edge and then hit the other edge and hit F to fill the hole. Speaking of holes, I'm going to show you in this video how to create precision holes within 3D objects. But before we go into that, I think something that wasn't innately obvious in the last video was the use of extrusion. Because we could actually use extrusion to go about and create a five millimeter wall upwards that's only five millimeters thick. And how would we do this? So let's go ahead and extrude this face out Instead of five millimeters, I'm going to go 0.5 because I'm working on such a small scale here. And let's hit enter there. And now here we have our 0.5 face that we can go ahead and now extrude this extrusion by, let's say, five millimeters. So keep in mind that you can extrude extrusions to create much more complicated structures much quicker than just going about and creating a whole nother face to extrude that face. Now, of course, this means that you're going to have all these leftover edges all over the place. If we go into edge select, so we've got this edge that's being created, this edge that's being created. Well, so these can be useful. These can also not be useful. It all depends on what exactly you're going for. But what you can do is select all these edges then we can go ahead and hit X to delete. And then what we can do is dissolve the edges away. So then we have a nice clean model left for ourselves. Now keep in mind, this does make things a little trickier in the future though, because you've just removed the control points that we were working with. And this does not delete the vertices, so to speak. So we currently still have a vertex here that we're using. We've removed the vertex up here that might have been a great point of reference in the future. So just be aware when you're deleting edges to, to try and keep clean geometry that you're also deleting reference points. And usually I would only go about cleaning my geometry once the entire object has been created. Now that we've covered extrusions extensively, I want to show you one more 
tool that we will use a lot within modeling. I'm just undoing a couple of times here. Um, that quite frankly comes in very handy. And this is inset. So like the extrusion, extrusions let you extrude outwards. Insets, which the shortcut is I, or you can get it with this little icon over here, insets a face. So we could inset this face, let's say 0.5, hit enter, and now we have an inset of this face. We could then go about and extrude inwards, inset once again 0.5, then extrude outwards once again. And that's left us with this really strange geometry here that would have been quite hard to do really quickly with 2D faces. So let's get precision back in order. We want to go about and create a hole right in the middle of this here. To do this, we can use an absolute myriad of tools especially if you've got all the add-ons that I've suggested along this entire course. So to do this, let's first start with PDT, and then I'll show you how to do it with CAD transforms. I personally, for something like this currently, I'd probably use CAD transforms, but I would like to show you all the options that there are because with PDT, you can get a lot of precision out of things. So let's start with PDT. Now, if you remember, when we were working on the 2D plane, to go about and find the absolute center of something, we would go into vertex mode. We would then select two vertices, and then we would use do one at percentage between selected points. So what we're wanting to do is move our 3D cursor to the center of these two points. Now, currently, we're set up on a working plane from the top view. This is what's going to catch you out more than anything when working with PDT. You've got to remember that we have three axes now to worry about. We have the top axis, we have the front axis, and then what PDT calls the right axis or the side axis. So let's go ahead and turn this to the right axis. So setting this to the right axis and going 50% between points will move the 3D cursor right here. Now that we have the 3D cursor right here, I don't really want to go about and add a hole right here instantly. What I'm wanting to do is go out back into object mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a circle at this point. Now, once I have a circle created, I can then hit R to rotate it. I'm gonna constrain it on the Y axis by hitting Y. I can now set a rotational degree. So let's set that to 90, hit enter. And now we have this circle. I'm gonna hit G, gonna constrain it to the X to just pull it out to see that we have a circle. So that circle would be going straight through the middle of this. Now this circle isn't very useful to us right this minute. So let's first turn it into a surface. If you remember, we have to go into edit mode for that, select everything as it is currently and hit F. So now we have a surface here. Now using what we've just learned, we're gonna go into face. We're gonna select that one face that we have. We're gonna hit E and we're going to extrude this face through our object. Now something to keep in mind that this is very much haphazard what happens here in the sense of the normals that are created from this extrusion. So it's a good practice to just quickly go ahead and check the normals of this extrusion, which looks like it's all in good shape, which is perfect because this next move, which is something called a modifier, needs to make sure that all the normals are correct. There's much more to make sure that is correct, but for now, let's just make sure that the normals were correct. So now that the normals are correct, what I wanna show you is the brilliant power that is Blender and modifiers. Modifiers are one of the powerhouse concepts of Blender. 
and it's one of the main reasons why so many people have switched over to Blender. Modifiers within CAD can be seen as the CAD timeline, for instance, within Fusion 360, that there's all these different steps. Well, within here, you can see that we have this little wrench. This wrench is the modifier shelf. Now, if you have bool tool activated, so the add-on that was right at the beginning in millimeter selection, you'll see that we have this. Now, the bool tool stands for Boolean operations. Now, if you're aware of 3D CAD work, a Boolean is when we're working with two 3D objects and cutting away from one another or adding from one another or intersecting from one another. Now, I'm going to be showing you all of these right now. So we have this hole that's been precisely placed with our PDT. Just quickly, before we go and use the ball tool, how would I go about precisely placing this with CAD, my favorite add-on currently, CAD transform. So let's just quickly move this cylinder way off to the distance here. Let's set the 3D cursor back to the world origin. And to set this right in the center here, we would turn on CAD, make sure that face centers are selected, select our object, hit G, select the face center that we're moving from to the face center that we're wanting to go to. At this point, I would probably hit G quickly once again, and then constrain it on the X to just pull it out a little bit so that it's overlapping on both sides. So this Boolean operation, how do I go about doing it? Well, there's a shortcut way and there's the long way. I'm going to show you the long way first and then the short way. So select the object that you would like to place a hole in. So our main objects that we've been working with. Then what I'm going to do is add a modifier. You'll see that there are many modifiers to choose from. What I'm going to go is pick a Boolean operation right here. So clicking this, nothing happens. The reason why is that it's asking for an object to do this operation with. So you can hit this little eyedropper and then select the object that way, or we can double click and you'll see that it comes here. There's many ways of doing it. So I'm gonna click our little circle that we created here. Now it may look like nothing has happened here, but that's because we've gone about it doing the long way and not using the ball tool. So this is how it would be manually done. So what would happen here manually if you really wanted to, you would then select this object and instead of seeing it as it is right this minute, we would go into visibility, sorry, not visibility, viewport display. Instead of textured, we would go to bounds. And here you can see that we'd have a cut right there where our, our geometry is. So let's just undo a couple of times here. So we have that back as a solid texture. Let's go into the modifier stack of our object. Let's delete this Boolean operation. And I want to show you the shortcut because that's where the real power comes in of the ball tool. You select the cutting object, then you shift select the object you're wanting to cut from. And now the shortcut is control minus. That is numpad minus. So control numpad minus does this cut operation. Now, let's say we definitely knew that we wanted to cut right there because right this minute we have this box that you don't really understand what's going on here. Well, the box is just, our object is still there, which means it's still interactable. We could actually go and hit G and move this hole actively seeing direct response of where this cut operation is happening. So we know from our first example that right this minute in the object properties, it's set to bounds. However, if you really want, you could set this to wireframe. So you see the wireframe of the cut operation. And if you prefer to have a wireframe outline when you're using the ball tool, you can actually change that in the settings of the preferences right here, which is display as wireframe. Now, something I want to show you is there is one other shortcut with the ball operation. 
which if you definitely know that is exactly where you're wanting to do your cut operation, you can click it, do shift click on the object you want to cut away from, and do control shift and minus. And what it does there is it creates the hole, it cuts it away, and then it deletes the cutting object so you're not left with this leftover object. Now I personally, depends on the cutting object itself, if it's a throwaway object that I know that I'm never going to have to edit again, I will do this. However, if it's something that I know that I might be using in the future, I sometimes like to keep it around. I'm going to undo a couple of times just to show you the other ways that this modification of the bool operation can occur. So we know minus takes away. So let's go shift select here. Now, if we do control shift plus, this is now united the object in. Now, if you want to see this more in a button clicky sort of way, we do have it. I think it's within the tool shelf. Let me just it's here, here on the edit shelf. We have the bool tool and you can see we have auto boolean and a brush boolean. So just to show that once again, so this time I'll do a different operation. We're going to click shift, click our object. We have just done a union and we've just done a difference. So let's do an intersection. So let's click that. An intersection gives us just the intersecting points between the two objects. And as you see, an auto Boolean deletes both objects. However, if I undo this, and I do that exact same thing, but this time I'm going to do a brush Boolean. This keeps both the objects. However, there's only the cutting object that is left as a bound. So let's undo that and show you the last one, which is a slice. And this is sliced away our cutting object. So we're left with an object right here of what was sliced away from our original object. Now we are still just covering the absolute basics of the 3D environment, but I do want to show you a quick example of both the pros and the cons of this bool operation. So I'm just going to quickly delete this here. I'm going to quickly duplicate this on the X, just give it a quick little rotation. And then I'm going to place this just a little bit by eye. Oh, actually, no, I don't want to place this by eye. We're all about precision here. So I'm going to be using the CAD movement tool. So getting my CAD movement activated, hitting G. I'm on vertex selection. Go there. Let's do that one more time. And this time I'm going to constrain it on the Z and we're going to go up to somewhere around there. So right this minute, this would be a great Example of, for instance, an interlocking system. Now, the ball tool will do this, but there is a few caveats to it. So let's go ahead, let's select this, let's shift select this, let's control minus, and you're going to see what our caveat is. The ball tool is great for simple cutaways, and it could do this, but there are many conditional elements to make sure that it fits in perfectly. But for instance, just to fix this quickly right this minute, let's hit G. Let's go on the X axis and let's just move this. Let's go 0 0.1 of a millimeter in the other direction. And let's hit enter. And you see that's done the cutaway for us right there. Now I would go into a lot more detail of what exactly just happened there. But quite frankly, I'm still learning all the little basics of that. But down in the description, I've got a link to a brilliant video that will show you almost all of the cases why a bool operation doesn't work and how to fix it. Now I'm going to risk a little bit with the case of maybe providing a little bit too information too early on, but I want to show you how some things that you've already learned can be used within the 3D environment. So if we go into this object and hit edit mode, I want to get this exact hole cutting right through this object here. Now let's say for whatever reason, this is some custom shaped hole that took you a long time to design in some way or shape or form. 
and there was no way that you really felt like redoing this. Well, to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to go into X-ray mode. I'm going to go into Edge Select this time around. I'm going to select everything that has to do with this hole here. Now what I'm going to do is within edit mode, I'm going to duplicate it and move it out. Now, remember what we can do now within the organization video, I showed you how we can now pop these apart and part them. So in edit mode, I'm going to go and hit P for parting. I'm going to go loose parts. And now we have this set as an object off on its own. Now let's quickly check something here. So if I go about and go and check the orientation of the faces, the normals, we can see that there's going to be a problem here. So let's just quickly close up this object because you need a closed object to do a bool operation. So let's hit tab. Let's go alt select this edge loop here. This is like the 2D operation. Hit F to fill in that hole and do exactly the same on the other side. So Alt, click, and we have that edge loop. Hit F to fill in that hole. And here we have our closed object now. Now, quickly checking our normals once again. We're going to turn on face off orientation. And as you can see, it's inside out. Do you remember how to fix this normal? So we're going to select everything and go shift N for recalculate normals. And you can see this has flipped the normals. So they're on the outside. Now there's something else that we're going to have to do pretty soon, which is our current origin of this object is way over there. So go ahead and add the origin back to this object. That's right clicking on the object, hit set origin. We're going to go origin to the geometry. Now I'm wanting to cut the hole right across here. So I'm going to need a little bit more length. So let's just go back into edit mode with everything selected. Let's hit S on the Z axis, make this longer. The reason why we do this in edit mode is because if we did this in object mode, I'm going to go and show the item transforms here. This would change our scale. And changing this scale can be a reason why the modifier of the bool operation doesn't work. But let's say for whatever reason you did change the scale in this manner. Well, all you have to do is apply the scale. To apply the scale, you go Control A, which gives you the apply menu. Here you can apply the location, rotation, and all the rest. But most importantly, is the rotation and scale. And for us, it's just the scale. So let's go ahead and hit scale. And as you can see, our scale is now 111 in object mode. So now I'm going to quickly give this a rotation on the X axis, 90 degrees, hit enter. And I'm not going to be too precise here for actually no, let's keep this precise because we're all about precision. Let's go ahead and we want it to be in the face center here once again. So let's go control C to enable our CAD transforms. Let's select our center face. Let's go into G, select the center face, select the center of this face. Let's go once again G. Actually, no, we don't have to go once again G. Let's just go into normal movement constrain it to the Y and move it out. And then from here, I'm going to say I definitely know that I want to have this hole right here. So I'm going to click on here, I'm going to shift click on there. And now I'm going to do control shift minus. And that there has given us our hole of our exact hole shape that we took from our own object. Well done on getting this far. It's one hell of a journey that you've taken from the beginning to this point, And we're getting so close to being able to do some real precision modeling, where I'll show you how I go about creating precision 
based models for 3D printing and laser cutting through real world examples. Now, if you found this bit of the course a little bit too challenging, remember that there's the obstacle course file down in the description. And I really encourage that you go and do this because you'll make sure that you've learned the fundamentals of what was covered in this video. Along with that, once you've given it a go, there is the video that is unlisted underneath the download link where I will go through the solution of everything that I cover in that little obstacle course. So a huge thank you to my patrons because you guys are awesome and I really appreciate you. And if you think I'm worthy of your support, I would love it if you'd consider it through my Patreon. Thanks for watching, keep making, and let the quest continue.